So here's what Dr. Branson says. Coupled with definitions, speaking of Dr. Tr Dr. Tuggy, it's coupled with definitions that rule out monarchical models of the Trinity, even from even counting as Trinitarian and reclassifying them as Unitarian, this obviously results in a bleak picture for Trinitarianism so defined. So Dr. Tuggy comes along and takes terminology that we um, biblical Trinitarians would otherwise expect and um, recognize as Trinity, and Dr. Tuggy kind of redefines them or repackages them, or uh, this is in the opinion of Dr. Banson, he um, re rewords them so that they uh, become questionable when it comes to Trinity. Here's what Dr. Branson continues with. But when we take a closer look at the actual history of the doctrine of the Trinity, right? We go back to history, we, we go back not just to the Bible, but we as Christians also go back to the first, second, third, and fourth, and fifth centuries where we had discussions on the issues of Trinity from the early church fathers, right? The heavy philosophical debates between Unitarians and Trinitarians and Arians and, and all of the other um, types of Trinity models and theories that were floating around during that time period. If we go back to that part of our history as Christians, as Trinitarian Christians, here's what Dr. Branson suggests the neglected doctrine of the monarchy comes back into focus. In other words, when we ask the question, who or what is the source of all truth and all existence, we come into uh, this discussion of monarchy. Well, then we come to the conclusion that, that not just God is the monarch, he's the monoarchy, the source of all things, but this same God of the Old Testament is equal to the Father of the New Testament, namely the Father of the Son. And if this Son is eternal, because the, I'm sorry, if the Father is eternal, if fatherhood is something that's essential to God, then sonhood must be something that's essential and eternal to Yeshua as well. And so we begin to bring Trinity back into the discussion. Dr. Branson continues, whether we conclude that monarchical Trinitarianism just is the doctrine of the Trinity, or whether we merely acknowledge that it at le is at least one legitimate form of Trinitarian theology, right? We can go in that direction as well. I know some people are going to say, well, I kind of have a problem just putting all my eggs in, on the basket of monarchical Trinitarianism, right? I don't see God as the single source. Uh, remember, some forms of Trinity focus more on the role of Jesus as the source of all things, something like that. Um, Dr. Branson says, well, either way, in either case, he says, Tuggy's central objection to Trinitarianism loses its force entirely. And that's important because many Trinitarians have a hard time these days articulating their disagreements with biblical Unitarians, especially not able to, say, fight against what seems like basic logic and common sense, right? 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3 versus 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 1, or 1 times 1 times 1 equals 1, or however you have your clever math equation to try and represent your basic understanding of Trinity. So, um, Thank you.